Hey guys, uh, thought I'd come on here because I see some crazy shots here from the Mauna Loa K Coronagraph Mauna Loa Solar Observatory. And having all that controversy about Solar Observatory in New Mexico getting shut down and whatnot. This site was down this morning when I checked it, <clears throat> but I pulled up the latest movie. This is for today. See, it's running. So it's running up to around uh, 20 something UTC, which take five off of that, 15. So we're looking at around 3 p.m. today, Eastern Standard Time. And we still have some of these circular objects here that pretty much remain stationary, although they do move around somewhat. And from my understanding, this is sort of a uh, much gamma enhanced photograph of the sun from the Mauna Loa Observatory in, I think, an infrared spectrum, my memory serves. But it also, I believe it picks up maybe some magnetic signatures, but I've never seen it like this. This is crazy. And this is running on, uh, see these are the minutes flying by. So these objects aren't, obviously aren't moving this fast, although they're moving pretty fast <clears throat> to make it across the screen that quick. Maybe it's just infrared. Maybe it's not something magnetic. I'm not sure, positive, honestly. But nonetheless, you get some great shots with this uh, K coronagraph. And look at all this stuff. This is a telescope from the Mauna Loa in Hawaii Observatory shooting directly at the sun. And this is the occlusion disk to cover up the uh, sun, of course, so you can see everything around it. Because it's a coronagraph. <clears throat> the corona is. Uh, the part that's uh, produced that's around the sun, the sun's corona. <clears throat> but anyway, this stuff obviously, it's, I don't believe it's near the sun, it's closer to Earth. But could this be a debris field from uh, <clears throat> Nemesis? I don't know. This is the first time I've seen anything like this. All the other pictures have been more static. You can go back and look at a couple of my other videos. Or if you uh, click on the Mauna Loa homepage and then click on the Get Data for the K-Core satellite, you come up with these uh, calendars and you just click whatever it's green. If it's X out, they don't they're not showing the pictures for those days, but whenever it's green, you just click on that. And then uh, I just click on play full res movie. That's what you're seeing here. So this whoops, that's not uh, that's not good. So here's the Mauna Loa Solar Observatory homepage. And this is what I'm talking about, the K-Core and our GF. You just click on Get Data. Takes you to this calendar. Alrighty then. So I guess I'll have to do it since we're on here. And I lost that screenshot. Let me just play full res movie and hopefully it'll download while well, it's downloading we'll look at ace okay this is ace i mean as i showed you before this is sitting out in the l1 position lagrange point one out between the earth and the sun it's about 1.5 million kilometers directly in between the earth and sun or that calculates out to 930,000 miles there's always been these gaps right around uh, gaps in the data since I've been doing it since maybe January or so, and you can go back and look at some of the vids. But usually the 
gaps didn't start till around 2300 or something maybe even midnight and they would last about five hours well the gap on the last thing i made it looked like it was a larger gap but never never seen one quite this big this is starting way back at 2230 and it extends all the way to 630 so that's an eight hour gap in the data so that would suggest to me that perhaps big planet nemesis getting closer to the a satellite blocking the data from the sun <clears throat> but that if it were a solar body though why wouldn't we be picking up data from it so uh, maybe i don't know it, it's crazy who knows if i had to guess it would have to be some type of a big planet now here's the uh, space whether i pulled up the last 300 frames the run and pulled it up about 20 20 minutes ago and i got these three synced here this is the y z cut this is looking straight down on the planet this is the y cut which looks sort of like sideways view looking straight across the planet from an equatorial viewpoint these are the folk electron radiation belts or radiation folk radiation belt electrons this is measuring the lowest energy electrons meaning that they're electrons that are moving at a slower rate and measure them at the lowest level 10 keV this is the highest electrons the highest energy ones that are moving faster and this is measured at 4000 keV or 4 MeV you can see all this backside pressure so if I had to guess I'd say nemesis got to be back here somewhere the uh, second sun the binary twin to our sun our sun emits mostly protons protons so nemesis being the binary twin and if you take into the newton's equal and opposite uh law then it would just stand to reason that nemesis would emit mostly electrons and you can see that represented here these are all electrons and they're all bleeding in and this is our normal bow shock right here because this is the sun side of the earth this is just an occlusion dish this is the actual size of the earth here and so normally the bow shock's only out here in front of wherever the solar wind pressure is coming from but now that we have this backside solar wind pressure earth has sort of had to develop a second bow shock or magnetosphere yeah bow shock if you will magnetopause which is represented behind the earth here but as you can see it's not as strong as this front side one because we got a whole lot of energy bleeding in from the back side and that can be represented here on the planet okay that thing downloaded so there it is i mean that's today right now we got all this stuff zip zipping around in between the earth and the sun and the sun simulator you can have the sun simulator this is a link that i'll put below the video this gives you the different types of orbits this is the polar sun synchronous and the geosynchronous okay that's the geosynchronous this is the one where most of the satellites go around the weather satellites and so forth that's at 22,236 miles above the Earth. And it's an easy orbit to maintain. So that's why they use it. They park them satellites out there. Uh, polar orbits. Don't really encounter them too much as far as what we're looking at. But I wanted to touch on this sun synchronous orbit. These, so this isn't like would mimic the sun so in other words to get the sun simulator up there it would have to orbit at an altitude between 700 to 800 kilometers so that's for the allows the satellite to pass over sections of the earth at the same time of day every day so that's the sun simulator it has to be at 700 to 800 kilometers and then of course there's the geosynchronous orbit which i i mentioned 
Now, people wonder how can these planets be so close and not create havoc upon the Earth? Well, the electromagnetic force is the strongest, of course, is a strong nuclear, and we don't. That just holds the atoms and stuff together. So that's why when you break the atom, that you have a huge explosion, atom bomb. Next one's electromagnetic. And the smallest one is gravity, 10 to the minus 40th power. So that's how there can easily be large planetary objects within uh, close proximity to the planet and not be wreaking that much havoc, havoc gravitationally. Now, we have had some oceans receding and so forth here and there, which I haven't seen anything reported as of late. And I would suspect that that's due to these large celestial objects being close to the Earth. But other than that, uh, all I can say is when this stuff starts getting in below the altitude of the sun simulator, 700, 800 kilometers, that's when all bets are off. They're not going to be able to really hide it too much anymore. And from this picture here, this would suggest to me that uh, there's some stuff getting pretty darn close. I noticed yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, that these purples and blacks are starting to come back. So that's indicating heavy, heavy electron strength, in my opinion. And just re real quick, we'll recap this. There's the IMF. That's the Interplanetary Magnetic Field Lines. They're generated by our sun, and they connect only to the nine planets. And as you can see, there's way more than nine electromagnetic field lines. So that would suggest to me that the Nemesis sun is connecting to our nine planets, along with its seven planets, and our sun's connecting to its seven planets. So theoretically, that would make about 32 interplanetary magnetic field lines, which eh, I don't, I've never tried to count them, but it could easily be 32 in here or close. So we let that play through a second. I don't know. I can't think of anything else to say right now. Plus, I'm running out of time, and you guys probably quit listening anyway by now. Please leave some comments down below. I get very little feedback. And uh, for me to keep doing this stuff, it, it helps to get a little feedback anyway. All right. God bless. Love you in the Lord. Peace out.